power to God. He prays to Him. He prays to Him. Oh, hallelujah. You may have your seats. Let's to turn together to the second Kings, chapter number six. You read three verses. The nature of our people. Second Kings chapter number six, verse fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That is amplified as God says, When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, things were happening the previous night, so it is the next morning. An army with horses and chariots. It surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. And the master answered, Don't be afraid. The prophet answered, Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Verse number 17. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so that so he may see, he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Praise God. Let us stop there and return to verse 16 and keep it there. Thinking in account of our time, we will not deal with much other than that. Elisha says, Do not be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I went through that scripture. Wow. Praise God. Haribu Kanisa. Praise God. Wow. That has been wow. Good to see you. Mm. Praise God. Of our new believer. The next year. Was it 2020? 2019. Yeah. We've been communicating. Still in good health. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you, youth. Supported our and she was unwell and unlimited. And she's well. Be that remember us that. Because uh, we were together in it. Very strong. Now it is good to see you people when you know what God has taken you through. Because otherwise, the business of climbing here is a business of it's a business of taking us somewhere. If we are not taking ourselves somewhere, then we look for something better that we can do. And most of us are things we can do quite well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Elijah tells our uh, 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 husband that you know what? Do not be afraid. The story of the previous day and the previous few days before this is that uh, this king of Haram had been planning to abuse and fight against the king of Israel. And every time he planned anything, then he went to do an ambush. He knew and they did not pass there. He called his generals and his servants, told them, somebody among you must be working with the why? Because 
We plan things in secret. We plan things in secret. That is what the Lord is just as to plan things in secret. So the king says, everything that we plan in secret, when we go out to execute, we find it exposed. And they do not pass where we are expecting them to pass. And the way we planned, we knew we were going to pass. So, tell me, who among us you is our traitor? Somebody was wise. They done their own work. But also, we told the king, this was a good person. From our side. Even some more, some more. There is a man of God. That's all right. In that proverb of God, he is able to know even what you plan in your bedroom. But he is the same that informs the king what you plan. Now I have the solution. What is the solution? You first leave the king and his army, and we target the prophet. When we have captured him and killed him, then we can deal with the king because the king has to last him to meet the king. And then that is what happens to us. Our cover is removed. Our protection is removed. Our security is compromised. Our Godfathers get sucked, get demoted, get removed. Our big angles are no longer there to hold our hands. Our jobs that we so very much depended on have taken away our businesses. Start to tumble to the floor. We are left to die. That is what the enemy tries to do. Our spiritual protection is shaken by the devil catching us somewhere where. We can no longer pray. We can no longer read the word. We can no longer walk with the Lord. And when we are that we become naked, it can capture us again. So, he said, let us go for the man of God, the prophet. He is the one who sees and hears in the spirit what we are doing. He is silencing him. And the king will be vulnerable. King will have no knowledge of what we are doing. We saw they gathered armies. I don't know why they thought they needed an army to go and attack a prophet because the prophet did not have an army. He only had one servant called the army. So they came with chariots and horses and surrounded Samaria. And they were right. They surrounded it to where the prophet was. And they waited for the morning so that by the time they are attacking, they will have gotten out and they will have known yet he is in the house today. That's why army is around at night, but they don't attack at night unless they are sure that they are targeted. So we can be in the morning. In the morning, they are sure that they Goes out and looks, looks, and everywhere. Horses are like this. You know what horses do when you are holding their fingers, their 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 strings from their 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 noses. They they want they are charging. They want to be released to attack. And they are every corner. And this was like we are finished. There is actually one translation. 
Two, one, what shall we do? We are finished. He has got, we are finished. In the man of God, he does not ask what is happening. Because he is already aware. And I wonder why the king of Aram did not realize that this prophet is able to be aware when they are planning not against him but against the king. Why did he think that he was not going to be aware that he's being attacked? The king has armies that can protect him. The prophet has no army to protect him. Why did he think that the prophet is not going to know and even run away and escape? Not be afraid. Those who are with them, those are who are with us, are more than those who are with them. That's where our temple is. The nature of our life is really It's really this last night. I sat down. Usually, you see me coming with a laptop. Because I wrote notes, let them deliver and let them think about that. You know, in the lives that we are in and the battles that we experience in the physical, Mawera, this thing, no whether it is in me holding it badly or it wants to break, if it is okay. Thank you. So you know, you keep on learning, eh? okay, keep on holding somewhere. Yes. Right. So, here was that. The battles that we find ourselves engaged in here, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. In other words, our backdrop physically, when you are going to court with a person that is oppressing you, does it matter how many lawyers you mobilize or how many lawyers they mobilize? The bottom line is who are backing them up? Who are they with? And who are we with? That is the beginning point. Who are on our side, not the ones that we can see physically, but the ones that are in the spiritual realms backing their camp, and those that are on our side backing our camp. That knowledge has begun to completely change my life. When you hear that there is no weapon that is forged against you that shall prevail, there is no time that will rise against you in judgment that you will not be able to condemn or to prove wrong. In other words, if any judgment is made against you, you are able to stand out and nullify it, re- nullify it, reverse it, and it becomes now in the void because you are nullified. And the basis of that is who stands on your side and who is standing the other side. That brings me to realize. There is no battle that you see here in the physical that he doesn't have the spiritual backing from both sides. And so I realized that the king of Aram had his spiritual backing. Probably he burned incense in the morning as he was preparing the army. Probably he gave a sacrifice in the morning, as he was doing that. 
transgressors have their gods that they go to and they sacrifice to. They have there are people that they go behind our backs and they pray. And the strange thing is in the secret places, in other words, they plan in their bedrooms what they want to do at this time. Oh, that glory be to God that they are doing it in their spiritual soul. We can realize who we are and rise up and on our spiritual side, get the backup. And that backup does not need to be looked for. Our backup is over there. All we need to do is to be on our battle line. Bible says, when David was unable to wear of the king, and he was released. The king agreed for him to go to the sins and took his sleep. Went to the river, picked his weapons of battle, and from there the Bible says he ran and he stopped at the battle line. When you arrive at the battle line, with the armor that God has given you and the weapon for battle for that purpose, then there is no damage, there is no fear, there is no Goliath, because as Goliath stands there, ah, we have this statement from David. The name of the Lord of hosts. What is why we are named for Nadia Quapo, Quajina, La Buana, Mungu, Wa Majesty. Kuna Majesty, Pandezo. We are coming. They are that side. They are this side. But I am coming. Elijah and declared and the word of God is forever set or in heaven. Our armies that back us are more than the armies that back our enemies. Hey, we can't lose no battle. We can't lose any battle. There is no battle that we ever lose in life. No battle. Oh, we are never going to lose the battle. Doesn't matter what it is for a small thing that you are fighting for. For a wall, big city that you want to conquer, we will overcome all battles because they that are with us. When they were open, look, they have us. One horses and giants. But the ones who are surrounding the side that Elisha is were horses and the chariots of fire. The horses were of fire and the chariots were of fire. They had not been sent from the king Israel, they were sent from the heavens. And so they had to come. Spiritual horses and spiritual chariots because the battle is won at the spiritual level. That is the nature because of what is happening to your life. There are things that she does, and every day I find her having opened already. There are things that they do against my business, and my business is done. You know, that's really, I think, this 
something we must have done because my husband can no longer stay in the house. You know, my wife cannot be trusted anymore. I think something wrong somewhere has happened. As you think about that, you want to rise up and start consulting. You can understand that. 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 You can was involved in conceiving the idea of walking into the city town or into the ministry of life. It has been planned. The person that received the money for bride is a worshiper somewhere. He has where he worshiped. And so that money is connected to the mouth of someone. This person stealing the land from you as an altar, where you learn the covenant of wealth and riches in the dark places. And his money is connected there. It means that he does have parted from that kingdom. And that means everywhere, when you are meeting in court, in some means at that side, speaking to the judge, what are your armies doing? Are you putting your trust in the arm of God, in the lawyer, the expert lawyer that you have put to discuss it with the Lord of the Lord? Last time, those that come with us are more. Those that are with us are more than those that are with us. And so, that's why the Bible does it meets it. It says, and in all these things, we are more than God. In other words, if you are a child of God, Walking right with God, knowing your position in God, there is no problem that you will manifest and you will rise up and take your position and you will ever get to it. You win every single part of land that you're going to lose. You are never going to lose anybody. It doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how educated you are. Doesn't matter. You are born than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you are in Christ Jesus, that's why it says you are born than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Because it is assumed. That you will never rise up to go and fight a battle without first standing and evaluating your position in Him 
and finding yourself in Him and Him in you. As you pray in your heart, pray to Him. So, when I knew the nature of our battles, actually, my subject was to be the weapons of our warfare. But I found you must first understand the battle. I told the question of the battle came last night because I kept on wondering. You may train people to fight, but they don't know where the battle begins. They will start fighting sometimes. They will start fighting agents of the real battle. You think that is the battle? That was just a manifestation of the battle. The battle is cooking me off where I'm practically boiling in a pot somewhere. If you knew where it is and overthrew the pot, broke it, then you will never cook it again. You will have finished with it. So it's good. So what's the battle? Let's talk about it. Prayer is one the name of Jesus Christ, another very powerful word. We are the word of God, a very powerful word. We are the blood of Jesus Christ. I still remember in 1994, when I was three months in salvation, I went for a mission in a place called Miharati. My wife was also there. We were both children there. And I was involved in my very first deliverance case of a man called Ben. I was possessed by a demon calling me. When all of us were outside trying to stop so that he may not try to stand, the lady went for the tongue and said, I pray to the Lord of Jesus Christ. 
and the tongue for the whole of it became a normal tongue and they returned to the mouth. And it is seated in the mouth. It is no longer for them. The words of our mouth are words of our mouth are Today, I want to combine one or two weapons and talk about them in the next less than 10 minutes as one. And to combine breath in the words of our mouth as one very important weapon. Because when you are praying, you are speaking. And so when you say prayer and you say the words of our mouth, yes, there are times that you speak words that are not prayer. But they are as good as prayer if those words are properly directed against your enemy. Whether you make them as a comment or as a command or as a declaration and decree, as the Bible says in John chapter number 22 and the verse in number 28. Put that scripture for me. John. Us today to see the whole of that and put it in amplified. Or even men I read in Java, because I think it is full. Ah, uh, 22, 28, John. Says, What you decide on will be done, and the light will shine on your way. Give me another translation. That's see this fact. What you decide on will be done. Him, this one has, has left some uh, amplified things. You will also decide and be free of faith. Yeah, you shall also decide and be free of faith. And it shall be established for you. There is one thing that you miss. You know, at times, you love deciding and decreeing things about circumstances that are outside you. For your own benefit, for your own good, for the good of the kingdom of God, you will decide. In other words, you will evaluate things and decide as far as this matter is concerned, this is the right way for it to be done. As far as this matter is concerned, this is what, supposed, what is supposed to be my policy. And then you decree it. Decree is like giving a command, commanding it. You will give and decree. That's why God commands us to obey His commandments and decrees. So you decide what. By the end of this year, this is what I want to become. This is what I want to accomplish. And so, you command the end to be established for you. But as I move now towards December, by December, I will be opening my new house. By December, I will be planning, I will be doing my wedding. By December, I will be Expanding my business by December, I will be expanding my territories. Why? Because you have evaluated and thought if things are working right for me, that is where I want to be by this time. And you decree. And Bible says, when you do that, then it shall be established for you. It has a part of Faith and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Because 
You don't decree things that are here. You decree things that are there, out there. But you are to go a long journey to reach there. But for you to reach there with success, without impediment and barriers and barricades, then the light of God, other translations do not ask God's favor. It's just an explanation. The light shall shine, or the light of God shall shine upon your ways. In other words, your ways will be illuminated by God so that as you walk to where you have decreed, the barriers, the armies of the enemy that are um, left and the armies that are with you. In other words, those that are with you who are more than those that are with them will light your way, will guide you in your way. The favor and the grace of God will go with you all the way and by the due time, the appointed time, you will be set in on what that which you decreed and it's already established. Because you decreed it, it got established, you believed it, and you began going there. Because some of the things get established today. But you enter them after a year. You enter into them after two years. You enter into them after five years. But you will be confident in that you know you are on course and what you decree is settled for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Prayer. Prayer as a weapon. Prayer as a weapon. I say the message with the words of our mouth. And that's why I went to that. Because when you pray, you can decree things. And when you read through the Bible, which is the most mentioned position of prayer, what do you think kneeling is the most appropriate, most mentioned? What I think you are told by a public priest to kneel, pray, kneeling, or something to never sit in prayer. For any fight, have you seen people doing karate? Have you seen people doing boxing? Have you seen soldiers on the line of battle? It's a position you must take and be the truth. Reverend here was showing us on your mat, let go. Anytime on your mat, if you ever try to do it with the right hand fast, it's a way. There is positioning that gives you an advantage over the enemy. When they are fighting, you see them with the right hand, depending on which of their arms is better in punching. If that guy positions himself this way, meaning his right hand, the right foot is the one that is in front here, then I will have to change my side so that I position myself appropriately. Because if we are this way, both of us, then it's not possible for me to use my hands properly unless I decide to use my kick up from the right. I'm not. And if anything happens when I'm positioning myself badly, then I can fall very easily. Yeah. Positioning of the feet. Now, who is needing the most important position in the world? How many people can fight physically when they are needed? 
Hmm? Somebody is coming to beat you, and you go down so that you are able to, 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 to face him properly. How many? When you kneel down, you disable your physical ability and release yourself to another ability to fire when you are in here the other day. When I'm weak, raise me to the rock that is higher than I. So, when we go down in our prayers, that is a weapon that completely confuses the enemy because we no longer are depending on anything that is ours. We no longer are using our physical abilities. We are using another power and that kneeling down draws the rest of heaven to back you up against the enemy who is coming against you. And so, what becomes the word that we utter in our prayer becomes explosive in its nature. Become fireworks in its nature. The enemy will not be destroyed. In the world, we see that it can be destroyed. You know, if you use your own carnal mind, the devil is not unable to read your mind. He can read your mind. If you calculate, okay, so now my God, like you are, you know, Miss Man, that's a problem. I hope I won't be in the room. You can look at it. 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 But when you meet God in the speech, you are mobilizing. The power from monarch, and in that case, the decision and the direction that the arrows are going to move is outside his comprehension. Just like when you get into prayer and you pray it in the spirit, you pray it in tongues. You doesn't know how to respond or which side to send a demon to counter. What you're praying because he can't know what you're saying. He doesn't know whether you are asking for a tanga to be sent or for a jet to be sent or for a missile to be thrown the other side. He doesn't know nothing. Another thing about prayer there is no time prayer has ever with something physical like throwing stones, like the, the shooting, like prayer. The only weapon that is being used is your tongue. Praise God. The Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Jesus Christ told his disciples, if you are faith as little as a mustard seed, you will faith. He did not tell them you will go and remove. Say you will say to this mountain, your root will be cast. What have you used? The time. The use of the time. The time. The time. The time. The time. We can use our time. To my answer to me and the music, we can use our time. And the create things. We can use our time. When we talk who we are and we change our circumstances. Two scriptures have been running in 
my mind and the two weeks ago go to heaven. Matthew 15 that every plant Matthew 15 every plant that my heavenly father has not landed will be torn up by the roots or will be uprooted from the roots. And uh, for a while, I kept on imagining that God will come and uproot that tree or will send angels and uproot that tree. And I started thinking about it. I was taken to Jeremiah, chapter number one, and verse number two. No, God calls us, ordains us, and sends us to do His purposes. God has no business with a tree that was planted by your enemy in your chamber. It is you who are the problem with that. And I think I thought that some time ago when we were talking about foundations. Talked about your field is taken by somebody. You go to court, you win back the field. Your land is given back. But that person is there to build a house, a chamber, and a tree planted. You remove what you don't need because the chamber is yours. Jeremiah, the one verse that says, See, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of nations and of the kingdoms. Root out. Look at this. Who's what is it? Root out. Every tree that is out there in the nations, in the kingdoms, in the families, in the workplaces. Everywhere it is ours to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to overthrow. In other words, we are able by our own terms. If you read the things which are in our sight, please, the Lord said to me, Say not, I'm only a youth, for you shall go to all whom I shall send you. And whatever I command you, you shall. That's what I want. You shall speak. It is speaking. It is speaking. And by speaking, whether in prayer or in our regular words, you are building, you are uprooting, you are overthrowing, you are destroying. But at the same time, there is something you are planting. And if you plant that which is going to be against you, then you are destroyed. I remember of the darkness that I in my darkness in my life. And you see them as battles by the enemy. You might even have your brother as the person that you are fighting with. But now realize that your brother is only the physical manifestation. The battle is created from the evil side. And they are Agents of the enemy, agents of the devil, armies that are backing him up to oppress. See the other side that you, as a child of God, as the Lord God of hosts, who are sent with you chariots and horses of fire to back you up. When you know that, then use your mouth to cause the battle to begin to happen. Allow them to knock each other at the spiritual level because 
to this point, you are either kneeling down, so not using your physical, or you are standing and your hands are wet. In any bathroom. Where I want to leave you for two, three minutes to fight your battle. And by next Sunday, we come and hear testimonies of battles that have been overcome, of businesses that have been reopened, of jobs that have been returned, of promotions that were lost but have now been repaired by your Yes, pick it up! Put it out because the power and the authority Jesus Christ says are our power. And all our authority has been given unto me. Go there, go. Go there, go. Go on and speak it. Speak it now. Go there, go on the process. Go there, go on the clearing. Go there, go on the speak it. Go there, go. Thank <laughs> you. 